You know what, I'm really confident that every single player who's ever played through Halo 3 had to have thought at some point when playing through that last level. Huh, I wonder what would have happened if Sergeant Johnson got his taffy collection that he keeps in his center console of the Warthog stuck in the gear shifter for the Warthog. When Master Chief and the Arbiter are trying to escape the Halo installation, what if they could only drive in reverse? Would this be something that is even possible? Well, you know us, we decided decided to test this and see if we could actually make it through the entire Halo 3 Warthog run driving backwards only. And honestly, going into this, we thought it'd be easy. Turns out it wasn't easy. This is what happened. So when we came up with the idea of going through the Warthog run backwards, we actually thought it wouldn't be too hard of a challenge. And we thought this could be something easily done enough that we could include in maybe some larger scale challenge video down the road. Boy, were we wrong, because there are a lot of factors that go into the Halo Warthog that you don't even really think about anytime you're normally playing through the game. So Luke, Dim, and I set out into Halo 3 to see if maybe one way or another we could drive through this driving section of a level completely backwards. Now, a few things to note about the Halo 3 Warthog. First of all, the thing we very quickly learned when just starting off, driving backwards, it is really hard to actually see where you're going. Typically, I've never really thought about driving long distances in a Warthog backwards, but Halo is a very different type of game when it comes to vehicle controls. The main function and mechanics behind driving a vehicle is kind of you just drive wherever you're looking, but when you're in reverse, you can only only back up in a straight direction if you're looking completely straight forward. There's no way we can turn the camera around to see where we're going at all at any times. And this is the Halo 3 Warthog run. So it's not just any type of regular driving section. Stuff's blowing up. The ground is literally falling out from underneath us. This isn't just a very simple, straightforward driving course. So since I was the genius that volunteered to drive first, I got stuck driving the beginning section and all of the little things you learn from doing a challenge like this were kind of guinea pigged on my experience in this. Going through just the opening area with all of the snow was extremely challenging because first of all, I'm getting call outs, of course, because I can't see where I'm going from Luke and Dim and they're yelling left and they're yelling right. And there's a mic delay when you're playing on Xbox Live. Plus the fact that they didn't really even know which direction they're calling out because all of the directions are kind of mirrored depending on if they're looking forward or they're looking backwards at the direction we're moving in. Where I would be driving and I would be hearing left from Dim and right from Luke and then we would just, you know, drive off the edge and die. It wasn't too long before we realized this challenge is something completely else. The biggest factor about doing this first section was memorization pretty much. I had to kind of memorize exactly what the callouts were based on what I'm looking at in front of me to remember when I'm supposed to turn. But even if you know when and where you're supposed to turn, there's other issues that come up as well because you have to also consider how hard of an angle you have to turn in and then on top of that this level falls apart as you're driving so you have to also kind of optimize yourself for speed in different areas and that brings us to the other main problem about the warthog it's really slow backwards this was one thing that kind of took me off guard with how slow it felt like the warthog was going at times it's probably because everything's blowing up falling down around us but it is really really slow when you're driving backwards fortunately enough though i was able to clear the first section getting to that very first checkpoint which was positive at least we thought we were making progress it only got worse from there there's a lot of turns and you do have to kind of use speed to just get through it and make sure you're moving fast enough so you have enough time to drive across the platforms before they fully fall down it took a lot of just learning as we went while we did bump into the wall a bunch we still managed to make it through the first platform after a few attempts and the straight shot that follows after was an easy one once we lined up the warthog now that we are at the second checkpoint the platform the platform seems to fall down much quicker and there's so many turns that you have to make and you're making them in reverse blind with flood that's jumping out at you and since this platform is one of the ones that is set to fall you have to do it in a certain amount of time and if you get stuck against a wall or something you're kind of just stuck and a lot of the times we'd be making progress but then we just kind of felt the warthog starting to slip up and we realized we were under the map dying so definitely these sections are one of the hardest parts of the entire 
entire run right away before you even get to the main long driving parts. But with enough memorization, which really was all that came down to that platform area, is just knowing exactly where the turns are and how sharp you have to turn based off of trial and error. We got to the next long stretch where essentially we're doing the Warthog drive backwards and we don't know where we're going. Now, typically I was at first relying on the vocal cues coming from Dim and Luke, even if they didn't make any sense along the way. However, after a while, we actually came up with a strategy that was something we would take with us through the rest of this run. Whoever's in the turret of the Warthog should point exactly where the driver needs to line themselves up with. This makes it where we don't have to rely as much or as heavily on callouts and the main focus of the driver just comes down to going as fast as possible backwards and keeping the vehicle locked straight on with the direction that the turret is pointed at. This does put a lot more responsibility on the person in the gunner seat as they have to kind of predict exactly when they should start getting the driver to turn and how to navigate the driver around different types of drop-offs. But this was better than the vocal callouts because the delay on the mic literally can just make or break the run so quickly at times. And then if you can make your way all the way through this area, we reached this section of the run where no matter how hard we tried, we couldn't get enough speed in the Warthog going in reverse to make it onto the platform. We essentially, as much as we were optimistic, thought that this could actually be a pretty big run killer here. You don't have nearly as much momentum as if you were going forward, which didn't give us much room to actually see if we could launch ourselves off of the ramp and onto the platform. Fortunately enough though, we came up with a couple of ideas that led us to the hope that maybe there was something we could do to continue on from this point. It mostly involved us playing around with different types of grenades to try to launch us the extra little distance we need to land on the platform. And this jump isn't even a hard jump comparatively to the rest of the jumps that are gonna be coming up. And it took us so much time and so much practice to actually get a jump that worked where we were able to have one of us jump out, throw a grenade and launch the rest of us onto the platform, getting us a checkpoint and respawning the third player with us. So while we were excited we got this far, we knew we were kind of in trouble for the rest of this run because we're gonna have some big jumps that we're gonna have to face off against. So of course we had to learn to zigzag our way through this landing platform again and drive all the way across another large area with the platforms constantly falling down from beneath us. However, when you get to the end of the tunnel section, there's essentially a ramp that you have to get enough air on to land on the platform without just falling down. This once again came up as another possible issue we were going to have. Now for this ramp, it was a little bit higher up than the previous ramp, but it felt like the distance and just the logistics into making a type of launch with a grenade that would launch players far enough would be kind of hard to do here. And since this is the last area before the final jump, there's no checkpoints either. So whoever was to make the grenade throw would actually have to stay behind and sacrifice themselves, leaving it up to the other two players to navigate their way through it. Luke had shown a lot of promise actually landing some really good grenade throws. So of course we forcefully volunteered Luke to be the designated grenade thrower. And it took so much trial and error and just figuring out where the grenade has to be perfect to line up and launch the Warthog the right way. We finally had a run where we made it past and landed, which we were just surprised about nonetheless, which then meant that I had to jump in the turret. And since Dim had already managed to navigate a lot of the driving sections earlier, so after me getting to free ride for a while, I had responsibility again, and I had to steer Dim to the end of the level with the turret. And of course, this is the part where all the gaps are popping up, all the things are falling down, there's different routes to choose from. There's a lot of pressure. I was stressing. But you know what? We actually made it all the way to the final jump without too much problem. But then the final jump is where this whole thing completely fell apart. Honestly, no matter how hard we tried, we tried throwing grenades. We tried just getting as much speed as possible. We could not get the Warthog anywhere close enough to triggering that cutscene to launch. Now we know for a fact you don't have to actually be in the hangar for the cutscene to launch. You just have to be airborne enough and getting close enough to it for it to work. So we were really kind of getting 
being demotivated with the fact that even the grenade throws that seemed absolutely perfect and the launches that seemed just right, just enough for Dim to possibly trigger the final cutscene would not work. And I'm not good at doing grenade launches by any means and timing out grenades, but out of the sheer quantity of my attempts, a couple of them were pretty good grenade throws and I felt pretty proud of my good aim and it still wasn't enough to launch the Warthog. So with that, we kind of were just left with this question mark as to if there was maybe a trick out there or something different that we weren't really thinking about that maybe could cause this to be something that's possible. But of course, it meant us having to restart all over again, which was lovely. Yeah, so one major thing that we didn't really think about when we started the attempt for this run was the fact that there are other weapons and things we could possibly use throughout the beginning section of this level that maybe could give us enough of a boost in that final jump. This just goes to show you that we definitely did not anticipate this challenge being as hard as it actually is. So we went back to the beginning of the level to redo this whole thing all over again, grabbing various power weapons along the way. We had gravity hammers, brute shots, fuel rod guns, rocket launchers, you name it. Then of course, right before going in for the boss fight, the strategy is to trade your weapon out with another weapon that's on the ground. So then when you leave the boss fight, you can pick up your weapons again and carry on with them. Now, while we had a lot of variety of weapons that we were going to test out, I was feeling very optimistic about maybe the likelihood of the gravity hammer being the perfect thing to give us that little extra push we needed to make it into the hangar. So of course it was up to me again. And honestly, it's really hard to perfectly time out the gravity hammer swing because by the time you jump out of the warthog and it actually readies the gravity hammer where you can use it, you're probably already falling off the map. And if you jump out any earlier, you'll be too far away to actually impact the warthog, which kind of gave a big issue for how we were going to maybe find a way to launch the warthog a little bit further. I decided to kind of play around with standing on top of the warthog. One of my attempts went awfully wrong. However, some trial and error actually came through and with a well-timed back step, I could actually hit the hammer at the exact moment that the warthog was leaving the ramp. And while the warthog went flying off in a random direction, we actually triggered the cutscene. We had no idea how we pulled it off or why that one worked when all the other ones didn't work. But sure enough, it worked. We had the cutscene. And honestly, this was one of those surprise challenges that we start because we think it's good for some sort of bigger video. And it becomes its own thing. And those are kind of the most fun ones. So we definitely felt really accomplished doing this one. If you're looking to put yourself through some sort of hell for whatever reason, get some buddies together and see if you guys can complete this challenge as well too. But hey, if you liked this video, can you take a quick moment first, double check you are in fact subscribed down below with notifications on. It helps us out a lot. We get to do more stuff like this and that's cool. Also, if you want to talk with us on Twitter, you can follow me at Rocket Elijah, and you can also follow Luke at Rocket Sloth Luke. So feel free to follow us on there and communicate with us a bit. We would kind of appreciate it. But otherwise, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you all next time.